So I'm going to start with uh, telling you about uh, the HRI. So it started off um, in 2007 uh, as an idea that uh, grew from uh, the college where I was studying homeopathy. And just, I was just approached and said, hey, Alex, uh, we really need to do research. And from there, uh, I, I was very lucky to get the help from uh, Liz Thompson and Peter Fisher initially uh, and Claire Relton to start things off. Uh, it took us so, two years to get charitable status, which is very important to us. It gives us uh, a status that's neutral, that's open, that's respected. Um, we then were able to fund, start funding uh, Stephen, thanks to the uh, generous donations from uh, Charles Wansborough, who's been our major donor over the years. We were then able to pull off uh, having 150 people at the House of Commons in the main room of the House of Commons in 2011. We uh, started also our first PhD with uh, Philippa over there. Uh, and then we had our first conference in Barcelona in 2013. Uh, we are structured with a board of trustees, and we're very happy to have Liz uh, Thompson here and Peter, Peter Fisher, uh, Peter Vixfin, sorry, uh, on our board. He's somewhere. And uh, we also have a, quite a big scientific and advisory committee that allows us to uh, get advice on very specific issues, also review uh, protocols, um, advice on experiments, and so on. We uh, then uh, have the management, uh, that we mostly, Rachel and I, and then also uh, people who help us. So uh, I just want to tell you a bit more what, what we do. We have uh, research projects, and um, so we're structured uh, really into the three categories of research projects that we have, uh, or how does it work, what can it treat, and uh, also communications. This, we, we've, as a charity, we're very much dedicating to, to learning from all this evidence and giving it back to the public. And that also means uh, health institutions, other organizations, politicians, journalists, and so on. So uh, typically, so currently we have, uh, this, is, this would be a, uh, uh, a Stephen Cartwright's uh, project we just talked about. This is me starting to do research on, on water. Uh, and also, more on the clinical side, we have uh, ADHD uh, with Philippa, depression, uh, PETA, uh, IBS, uh, and soon we'll be looking at bone fractures with Rachel. Um, and so, you, we heard also that uh, we are hosting an access to Core Home, the database of clinical research. Uh, studies in homeopathy. I uh, encourage you to go. You have to sign. This is part of our agreement with the Carsten Stiftung. This has been possible as a collaborative effect uh, uh, endeavor with uh, the Carsten Stiftung. We are very good at this uh, type of data collection. We've tried to make the access and the uh, 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 usability of the database uh, better, if possible, through our interface. So I encourage you to have a, have a look. Um, and this is where I hand over to Rachel. Thanks. So as Alex was saying, um, in addition to carrying out our own research projects, we do feel that a very important part of HRI's role is to actually take the existing data and help communicate it in a new way, because I'm sure you've heard this um, statement that there's no evidence for homeopathy, that there's no science, that there's no good trials, etc., which gets pretty annoying after a while. So what we did was we spent quite a long time, I think it was 18 months of my life, um, creating this new website, trying to create something really fresh with the data that's already out there. So looking at the Google Analytics, we saw within about a week of launch that by far the most popular part of our website was the homeopathy FAQs, which is addressing these really key questions. They're sort of questions or statements that people tend to make about homeopathy. And the most popular page, the one that challenges this notion that there is no scientific evidence. Now, everybody here is familiar with these stats, which are courtesy of Mr. Robert Mathis' hard work. So we felt our job was to just make this accessible to people so that they really got it, because you know science isn't everybody's first choice. So we came up with these kind of visuals so that you can actually see something as simple as a pie chart. It's not rocket science, but for some people, this really gets the point across in a better way. Then we thought, okay, 
lots of people these days won't even read anything. They won't, you know. So I know, we know a lot of really good people <laughs> who are really intelligent. Let's film them talking about their work. People might just go to YouTube for three minutes, so we've been putting a lot of time and energy into that. Of course, we did the, the conference, but we're aware that not everybody can be here at these events, so we've made sure that we got the films done as well as we possibly could so that people could start seeing them online. And it might be a good time to tell you that as soon as we've got the Rome films done and dusted and up, we're going to make all of the Barcelona films free for everyone, so you can do what you like with them. We also generate... <laughs> oh, <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> We also generate these research articles um, on a quarterly basis, which again, it's about, this is quite challenging. You try and get people like someone like Iris Bell, who's amazing, and say, right, could you please do that in two pages of A4 in easy English? So uh, we, we do this sort of four times a year is as much as we can manage, trying to bring the really key articles down into a kind of really simple form. So who's doing all this? <laughs> Alex and I are the only full-time people at HRI, and then we have Simon and Alistair, who you both know, who are part-time, and we have three consultants who are focused on particular projects, like Sean, who worked heavily on the Core Home database. So we worked it out the other day when we were feeling particularly knackered, and thought, do you realize it's really th three people doing all of this, and coming to the realization that this actually is not sustainable. Might even damage your health. So, um, this is a point I said to Alex when he nagged me to join HRI some years ago. I said, in the end, I said yes, but I said, never, ever ask me to ask for money, because I don't do that. So, he can ask This is where I step in again and um, ask for your support. Um, we really need you to um, help us. It doesn't mean it doesn't necessarily uh, looking in your pocket straight away, but that would help. Uh, but uh, support can also be something simple, like making sure that people know what we're doing, making sure that, um, that we, we, you work with us, that we uh, work towards getting access to funding, um, you know, writing grants together, um, being able to um, generate more interest and more funding, because we really need more funding. You know, uh, most of you really know how expensive research is, um, and we are still at a level where we are struggling to really finance properly the research. And I'm sure I'm not telling you anything new. And I think for me, what's really important is that with the HRI, we built a charity. So our aim is to gather expertise, gather people together in a framework so that if people give us money, we have uh, the ability to get proposals peer reviewed independently and then, they, then you know that the money that goes there goes to, to projects that have been deemed worthwhile by peers of the community. So, I want, so this is, this is a, a, an important aspect of what we do, and what we're trying to do is channeling these funds, but we really need also your support in making that happen. So please uh, talk to, about us, and please uh, do distribute Ali Flitz uh, any occasion you have. And, um, I think that's really all from us today. Thank you very much.